Uh, the BBC is in trouble for producing a drama on the life of Jimmy Savile, starring Steve Coogan. Is it true or is it false? Oh, I know this one's true. I know this one's true because I've seen it advertised. I've seen it in the newspapers. It's actually, reading the news is frowned upon as cheating. That's that's right. Yes, yeah. I can't I can't read the news. You're right. <laughs> but but can't but, read. But, but I can't. Yeah, just can't read in general. I'm the more pointless Alexander Armstrong after all. You managed to deliver that Alex Armstrong joke without even reading it from your notes. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like it. it's almost like it's ingrained now. Just yeah. to say it. It's you almost know, like you wrote it last night. Pointless, really. Isn't it? Pointless. <laughs> pointless. Exactly. That's the name of the game. So come on, so come on, Bob. You've, well, you, you're, you've done a lot of comedy wamsley, in your time. Wamsley, wamsley, wamsley. Woo, <laughs> I don't know. I, well, you're talking about. I think it's true because uh, they're kicking out a fuss. They shouldn't sort of like sort of almost celebrate the uh, the life of Jimmy Savile. I mean, it's amazing. But it's, it's drama, isn't it? It's drama, and Steve Coogan is a brilliant impressionist at the best of times, so he'll do a good job. It's an interesting. It could be a good drama. Yeah, but how can it. you how can you cover? How can they make lots of dramas about the life of Hitler? but not cover the life of Jimmy Savile. It doesn't make I think, any I sense. Think, well, Lois, I think the point is this. Steve Coogan is principally a comedy actor. He was on Philomena, and Philomena did deal with a very serious subject, the abuse of young women and children by the Catholic Church. But it was principally about an old lady going to America. It didn't have the serious nature that this Jimmy Savile one ought to have. He did uh, play the uh, King of Soho as well. Uh, what was the name? Paul of... Raymond. That's right. So he, do... he has got a track record of playing complicated... Drama parts, yeah, but can actually. I just say, when, when is the BBC going to stop making documentaries about itself? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, who will be next? Will they have one on Hugh as well? It, 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 I tell you what amazes me about it, Emma, more than anything else. The way the BBC says, oh, we scrutinise ourselves, we're doing a documentary about it, we're doing a drama. No, no, no. Just stop your presenters misbehaving. You don't need the drama series, do yeah, you? Yeah, maybe crack on with the internal reviews rather than writing about... What if it's a bad show, them? though? What do I mean, Jim's not there to fix it, is he? So what's, <laughs> 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 it dreadful, what's that dreadful joke about it? It was about to say that I was, I was on Jibble Fix and he fixed it for me. Well, that's not going in the final. <laughs> 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 okay, so, so before, before my lawyers actually finish this for us, why don't I get the answer? Yeah, Is it true or false that the BBC have made a drama about Jimmy Savile starring Steve Coogan? It's true. It's, it's, true. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just start. Okay. Uh, Bake Off has banned. Uh, Mexican week on the grounds that the worries yeah, that nah, some nah. viewers may find it offensive, Emma. I could totally believe that. Um, I just, I think that when you're looking at this sort of thing, but what about Black History Month? Why, why are some of these things allowed and some of them aren't? I find it very confusing. It's almost like certain groups of people are allowed to not be offended well, Emma, and Emma, other groups of people aren't. Oh. Emma, I don't understand how you can talk about um, cu cultural appropriation, i.e. we shouldn't be taking other people's cultures and meshing it into our own, and then saying we want Britain to be culturally enriched. Those are presumably the complete opposite, yeah. and yet people <laughs> on the political left seem to support both of them. Well, it's ridiculous because it is actually a show that celebrates all of the food and... Um, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, what are they going to do next? Take away our Indian takeaways or... Well, you know, a, like to eat Indian that's food? That's a national dish, yeah. isn't it, Curry? I mean, Mexican. Yeah, yeah. I, whenever I go to a Mexican, I always have the same thing. You know, this <laughs> about three days afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, why, 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 why are they trying to say that it's racist in any sense? You're just cooking from a different country, sure. I think, I think they were a little bit upset when uh, a certain overweight comedian... Well, it's not me. Why did I say that? <laughs> on, this, on this panel. <laughs> yeah, I say that. Why did I say that? Um, wore a sombrero. Do you think, Why? Do you think oh, so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous, isn't it? Hey. I saw a great clip of a guy going around in, in local communities in Mexico saying, oh, are you offended by this outfit? And they went, no, we love that you're wearing our culture. Oh, it should be yeah, celebrated. It should, celebrated. Yeah, where it should be celebrated. Why did the Mexican throw his wife off the cliff? Tequila! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I feel like that world. might be the kind of thing that they do get offended by. No, no, no. I'll oh, throw what? my ex-wife off a cliff any day of the week, me. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, is, that, is that the killer? Uh, no, that's a different personal outfit. No, that's okay. a personal <laughs> no, reason, don't worry, really. Don't worry. She's already wiped him out. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say on a serious note, what will happen if, if we don't... If we say, oh, it's offensive to have, you know, for example, Apu from The Simpsons and things like that, then what happened... And David Williams wasn't allowed to have um, an Indian shopkeeper he was criticised for it in one of his uh, books mm. and everything. But then what happens is you actually end up annihilating certain people and certain from certain, you know, types of 
parts of society completely out of yeah, the media. Yeah, you're ignoring them, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Ignoring yeah. Them. How is inclusive. that better? Look Everything the... should be inclusive. It's vicacious behaviour, or va vacacious behaviour, isn't it? Being offended on behalf of someone else. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let them be offended. Like, there's lots of other people that are worse off than them, people in wheelchairs. I mean, they can stand up for... No, they can't, really. Can they? <laughs> hey, uh, anyway, no, part. what I'm trying to say is that, that people want to be um, equated whatever colour, whatever um, condition you're in, whatever physical condition or whatever you think. And also, everybody it's live their own life. opportunity is mockery. So, Bobby, you've had a bit of a bad day in the past 24 well, hours. Well, I haven't, because I've got a flat tyre for the fourth time this year, and uh, I had to end up sleeping on a, on a friend's couch and uh, with a dog that snored. And uh, I haven't shaved, so I'm a bit, uh, bit worse than coming, so I am. So, 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 I love the way you've described your ex-wife as a friend. That's what <laughs> you <get. laughs> I'm sorry, mate. She was trying to be told me. She once oh? told me... <laughs> That's her now. That's her now. Oh, please say it, isn't it? I know. Well, he's not mentioned that he lost the £3 million house. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, yeah, his car was absolutely knackered. No, it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, never worked a day in her life. Yeah, absolutely. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That, was, that was your divorce lawyer. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> no, my ex-wife once said to me, she said, I don't think I could ever live without you. Isn't that a nice thing to say? And I found out last week she's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when my, when my brother got divorced, he signed, I'm not joking, he said, I like this house much as the first time I bought it from you. Oh, <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. But, OK, so has uh, Bake Off banned Mexican week on the grounds it might be offensive to somebody who's presumably not Mexican? I don't think so, no. It's absolutely true! Former Prime Minister Liz Truss oh, yeah. has claimed that Rishi Sunak wasted 35 billion more than she would have done if she was Prime Minister. Well, as in she would have wasted some, but not quite She would have wasted much. some, but not quite as much as 35 billion. Uh, well, I know, I, I actually, you know, I do read the newspapers. Again, and another I, cheat. I know, <laughs> and I actually know, I actually know that this is true. But, uh, of course, Rishi Sunak did. That's why he was, he was put in to spend, spend, spend and make sure there's no difference whatsoever between him and the Labour Party. It's amazing how much money he's spent to achieve absolutely no change at oh, all. Oh, yeah. no, 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 he's made the changes he wants to make, which is make... Which is, you know... Him being, so him being Prime Minister. A socialist. So, Emma, your former Tory advisor, do you believe that the government's wasted £35 billion? Yeah, absolutely, under Rishi. I can totally believe that, yeah. I mean, the I would say I would, I'm a former Boris Tory. I'm not a former Tory. I don't, I don't identify with this Conservative Party whatsoever. Neither does anybody else, but... <laughs> <laughs> you've got to have respect for Rishi. He lost the election and got the job. Well, he didn't actually get any elected at all. No, he didn't. No. No. He, no one elected him. The only people who elected him were about seven mediocre junior ministers who decided that he might promote them. Yeah. That's absolutely yeah. right. Absolutely right. I mean, it's sad, actually, because not only was Boris Johnson, did he win that election, he wasn't able to carry his full term as Prime Minister, having got the biggest majority since Thatcher, but they also threw him out of Parliament. Really disgraceful. It's absolutely horrendous. And I think that um, at least Liz Truss was elected by the Conservative mm, members, um, but Rishi wasn't elected by anyone. And she holds the record, of course, if she wasn't in there very long, was she? No, well, I've got yeah, to say, yeah. we were talking, Bobby, about Pointless earlier, the TV show. Let me tell you, the name Liz Truss is going to win somebody the jackpot on Pointless. <laughs> <laughs> the following question. At least who, it'll win something. Who was the Prime <laughs> Minister when the Queen died? Yeah. Right, that yeah. is a pointless answer, isn't that it? Is if yeah. ever I saw one. Mm. OK. okay. Well, hence the next question, of course, which would be, what is the difference between uh, babies and nappies and uh, politicians? Uh, well, they both need uh, changing regularly for, and for exactly the same reasons. Oh, <laughs> I told you that about in the car. Very I told you that about in the car. He said, make sure you put it in. Why, why have you just said that? <laughs> but, uh, you know, this bloke's supposed to be a professional from the bloody 1980. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, 12 million viewers. <laughs> I know we discussed it in the bloody car. What am I meant to say? Yes. Well, we don't re regularly drive together now. <laughs> No, the oysters and champagne was purely coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, well, I, Leading I, up to a gang. I know, <laughs> I, I, know, I know he's lonely, but I'm not. I'm, just, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Not, not after that thing with the crankies. Right. Oh! No. Jesus. The swinging 60s. That's your agent. OK, <laughs> so has... Oh, come on, Andre, get, just get through this. There's not, <laughs> not much left. Come on. OK, so has the former <laughs> Prime Minister Liz Truss claimed that Rishi wasted 35 billion more than her? Yes, that's absolutely correct, and I'm hopeful that she's going to be coming on the show soon. So, um, so I'm going so to say nice things about So her. don't announce it to the public in advance. <laughs> 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 it's absolutely true! Yay! 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 I just...
I just don't know what's going to happen next, but Bobby... <laughs> yeah, what's my question? Bobby, it's your first question. <laughs> my first question, Come on, in. Bobby. So London Mayor Sadiq Khan oh has God. announced his latest policy uh, to save the planet. Yeah. He's implementing the Chinese one-child-only policy, and it's going to come in by 2024. Well, is that, will, will it be compulsory to wear condoms or something? And you could wear one on his head, because if you act like one, you might as well look like one of his head. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and, is that what's going to happen? Are we going to be asked to use contraception because me and my, my, new, my, my new girlfriend, we can't have kids? <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> the thing is... I'm sorry, I'm we... sorry. Just, just to be clear... Oh, just, look at these from, new millennials! From, from, I, I, I would like different to... parts of the country, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> You're, you're making up your own jokes on that side. Oh, okay. I don't think I'm old enough to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, 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 that was the joke I thought it was. But anyway, is it gonna, are they going to bring it in? Are they, what are they going to do? They're going to bring it bring in? What, in? A, what, contraception or something? They're oh. going to put something no, in our water? Can I say this about no. Steve Right? Do you know, he's actually the chairman of this really weird group of people called the C40. These are mayors oh, yeah. from all over the world. Yeah. And they are planning some crazy communist-level stuff Three outfits you're allowed to buy a year, one plane trip every 10 years or something yeah. crazy like yeah. that. He's absolutely lost the plot. Who is he? Sadiq Khan. Oh. Yeah, it's all the, it's all the <laughs> mayors Mayor from all the major cities around oh, the world. Oh, God. It's I mean, their own equipment. I bet, yeah. I, I bet that's no fun, is it? It doesn't sound like it. But they all manage to fly in there every year to talk yeah. about these problems, don't they? <laughs> but, so, actually, but actually, we, we've, we've talked about this before, haven't we, Emma, about the fact that um, hypocrisy is something that keeps these people powerful, doesn't it? Because, of course, Sadiq can say, well, you can't fly, but, of course, I have to, because I'm the Mayor of London. Mm. Because there's absolutely nothing like Zoom where they could converse in any <laughs> other way than flying halfway around the world, right? Carrier pigeon. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of them in London. I mean, I've got, to, I've got to be honest with you, I'd be willing to fly in order to not meet Sadiq Khan. <laughs> but then again, he absolutely hates me. Are they me. really serious? He's, he's, that's his suggestion. And he's going to ask his one, one child policy or something. Yep, absolutely. Well, you've got to guess whether it's correct or not. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> uh, that's the, that's the what mad world that we live in. Um, I would say uh, it's not true. I can't, how many, I can't, how many, how many, children, how many children do you have? Uh, uh, I have three kids, one of each. Uh, <laughs> has London Mayor Sadiq Khan decided he's going to implement a one-child policy? I don't believe it, it. I think it's false. Or is it false? False, 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 false. It's absolutely false! <laughs> OK, that was a question from our good friends at the Upper Lip. Now, what are the <laughs> scores? Woke Wabby! Hey! 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 I'm all right, my friend. Oh. What's going on? Are you a Bobby Davro <laughs> fan? We're, we're best mates. I'd best I'm, mates. I'm a bit young, but, you know, I think, I think, uh, I think so. Oh, come on, come uh, on. He's, don't he's, kill the rabbit. He's done worse. OK, uh, what uh, are the scores? Five points each. Five hey. points hey. each. Well done, Clay. Well, rabbit. See you, Wendy. So long. Alex, the rubbish Alex. Yeah. Come on, come on. 10% of people are pulling their teeth out because they can't get a dentist appointment. Is it true or is it false? You know, so I've noticed there's a trend of all these like high street NHS dentists going private. I don't know if you guys yeah, have seen this, yeah, they have. but they're disappearing off the high street rapid rates. And I, I did read this really interesting report that said that a lot of the 75% of the of next year will go also private. They'll 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 get rid of their NHS requirements. Yeah, I don't it's quite scary, isn't it? I don't, really? I don't understand what an NHS GP does. They're toothless. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. He's, he's, he's one one, but, but what time was your appointment? Was it 2.30? 2.30. Oh. It. Yeah. It's got to be a Chinese appointment, though. It doesn't work otherwise. If you were desperate, would you pull your own teeth out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to so think I'll do that now. <laughs> Listen, you go to Glasgow, 10% of people have, haven't got any teeth. No. And that's the truth. Look, look, Bobby, just cos just cause your shows were populated by toothless simpletons... <laughs> got me. 12 million of them, where do you find them? Oh, I don't but Bobby, know. Bobby, TV's changed, though, hasn't it? Everything's Brilliant. woke nowadays. You know, can't I, get on, can't I, get on I, I watch somebody like you, I watch somebody like you, and I think to myself, you know, you're just having a laugh with people, but now everyone's like, about. oh, this is offensive, that's offensive. Offence isn't given, it's taken, in. You can be offended at anything. Everyone's got the right to be offended, doesn't mean you're right. It doesn't mean to say we've got to be offended at the same thing. Do you think, I was do... in PC World yesterday. Can't say anything in there. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you reckon, though? Do you reckon, though, that we've that we've lost something yes, with the have. loss of all this comedy? Well, we haven't lost it. We've been told that we, we've got to be told yeah. what to laugh at now, and that's not right. What amazes me? Everything is funny if you can laugh at it. Whatever it is, everyone's up for grabs. As long as you're not inciting violence or, or you're being particularly cruel, cruel sick, yeah. I think that's OK. A yeah. joke is a joke. And what makes, what makes me laugh, though, well, what doesn't make me laugh, is when you see these stand-up comedians and people don't laugh anymore, they clap, where you go, 
Brexit, people are all racist. And... <laughs> you know why? Because it's not funny. It's not funny. And, and laughing is an instinctual reaction. So, yeah, you're right. The yeah. clapping. See, I don't laugh. Isn't it a wonderful thing? I often say to my friends, I'm really very blessed that I can go out there and make people laugh. I look down. Not everyone's going to find me funny. Some people don't think I'm funny. I mean, the majority <laughs> don't, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Everyone loves and, 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 and the dwindling number. But actually, on the serious note, you know, you've suffered a bereavement recently, but you're yeah. still smiling and still but I laugh about it. You go, I not laugh about the grief. Everyone's got to go through grief. You get on with it and laugh is the best medicine. It is. Unless you're like me and you've got erectile dysfunction, and then that's just cruel. <laughs> right, Alex. Yeah. Have 10 percent <laughs> I don't look, I've got to try and get it back on track. 10 percent of people have they tried to take their teeth out with with well just try to anything. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna go true with this one. It's probably because they need money from the tooth fairy after Rishi's yeah. our that's economy. Great, that's Alex, it's absolutely true. Yay. Okay, so to Emma. Former Prime Minister Tony Blair is demanding that junk food is taxed to a level where, quote-unquote, poor people can no longer afford to buy it. Is it true or is it false? Oh, I bet it's true. We've already got the sugar tax nonsense going on, so I bet it's true. But it is um, important, I think, on this to make the serious point that it is almost a tax on the... It's infantilising gen yeah. the general public and to see you know, the working class somehow are unable, unable to decide what they want yes, to eat. So but, but perhaps perhaps if you're a banker, then you are able to decide what you want to eat. I think it's absolutely disgusting. I, 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 find, I find the whole thing amazing because there is just this assumption that working-class people are stupid, which I, I'm afraid I don't accept. You know, I used to work for a, a local council, a Westminster City Council, and in the child protection department, as you can imagine, we couldn't talk about specific cases. But there were as many rich people neglecting their children because they were working in banks as there were poor people. The only difference was the rich people had the money to employ nannies. It's a poor tax, isn't it? It's a tax on the poor. And, and it, it, we saw the Tory government trying to do this recently, didn't they, with the, with the increases in their, in their junk food tax? Tony Blair's got a bloody cheat doing this because he, his government were the people that, brought, uh, that abolished home economics being essential in schools, where young, uh, you know, kids, girls and boys learnt to cook. Lois, that's actually a really good point because he was meant to be all about education education, 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 yeah. wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And what he's done is taken away the education and got through to just um, amending the results. Yeah, yeah, because people can't um, cook. Is it Tony? Donald is Trump it Tony? Yes, order. and uh, women on about cooking. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, yeah, have you got any opinions on ingredients or anything? No, I actually don't do much cooking. It's my boyfriend does it. Yeah. I've been uh, cooking for <laughs> 18 years now. I've got my own flat at Bellside yeah, Park. No, I get yeah. taken out for dinner every night, so it's lovely. Yeah, no wonder Mike Graham gets better figures. I mean, this <laughs> one we work with. Oh, let's have a, let's have a conversation about custard. <laughs> Do you know my favourite fast food politics? No, 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 no. We're not having a conversation about dinner. <laughs> I, I was once mooned at Ronald McDonald's. I knew it was Ronald McDonald because he had sesame seed buns. No, <laughs> get in there, Dan. <laughs> get in there. Anyway, there's <laughs> enough dad jokes to last the entire eternity. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's words, I remember Nicholas Soames at Winston Churchill's grandson once turned up to a BBC interview at breakfast time. And he said, have you had any breakfast yet? And he said, yes, I have. Four bottles of claret and a brace of pheasants. Yay! Hey, um, now, that's he, a breakfast. Yeah, we a had a Brexit like... Christmas dinner last year. Yeah, no Brussels. So, <laughs> uh, Tony Blair, has he brought in <laughs> or does he want to bring in a junk food tax? Is it true or is it false? 100% true. It's absolutely true! Yay! <laughs> OK, what's the score, Woke Wabby? Here it comes, Wabby. Uh, Daffro's on 1,000 points, and everyone else, including Lois, is on minus 1,000 points. Uh, minus 1,000? What? Minus yeah. 1,000. Hang yeah. on a minute. I thought that I, I always win. No, what's you haven't happened? got any of the questions right. Well, and, I'm 2,000 points ahead. I'm exactly, exactly. Well, you know what? Do you know what? I, I don't care anyway, because I'm off to Washington, D.C., and I'm just going to Heathrow right now. So, bye, everybody. Oh, bye, bye. bye. <laughs> don't <laughs> touch me. Oh, you didn't say that last week come on my flat. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That was The Woke That Was, continues after the break. Yeah, it's been an absolute nightmare. Oh, hello, and welcome back to part two of That Was The Woke That Was with this man, Bobby Davro, ruining the show. <laughs> nightmare. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. So to Alex, 
the number of babies born has fallen to the lowest level since 2002. Is it true or is it false? Well, you know, I'm, I'm 32, so I have a lot of friends who have been getting married and, you know, only a couple of them have been having babies. Only a couple. Two of my friends have had children. The rest are all happily un. Birthed. Yeah, but I'm gonna. Well, they're not, <laughs> they're not, they're not, they're not birthed. Birth. They okay. have not given birth. Okay, let, let, but let me let me point out this out to you, Alex. Let me teach you something about statistics. The statistic only two of my friends have had babies <laughs> is no good until you tell us how many friends that's you've how, got. That's how you gov do it, isn't it? I don't know. It's like, I, look, I, I, actually, this is quite a concerning figure because, you know, we're not having enough children. So this is why the government are importing tons of cheap labour. That's why we're having an immigration crisis because the government don't actually want to end it because we're not having enough kids. So we'll flood the market with more people. But Emma, Emma, on a serious note, what worries me, and, and I agree with what Alex is saying, by the way, but it seems to be that because of the cost of living crisis, which is effectively self-inflicted, British people are not having babies, and then we're bringing people in through immigration to kind of replace the people that we're not having. But it's not because people don't want children. It's because they can't have them because of the cost of living crisis. Yeah, I'm still slightly stuck on the idea that someone 32 has a lot of friends, to be honest. <laughs> but um, I, tot I totally agree. It's really, really difficult for anyone to even contemplate affording having children. And you have to choose... I think, at the moment, between whether or not you want to have children, whether you want to have a wedding. If you want to have a baby, you can have it. I just think the expectations of our generation are totally different from what they were 20 years ago. I have to say, are when you... I was 32, my best friend was vodka. <laughs> uh, he was a nice Russian bloke, wasn't he? I remember him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't believe it. The people, are you talking about just this country? You didn't, you, you no, know. in this country. Well, what, there's just 8 billion people in the world. What's the population? Is 75 million? Something like that, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. What's the population in, in the sort of like... Uh, in, in the rest of the world? In the rest of the world. What you do is you take 8 billion <laughs> and subtract 75, 75 million. million, which is whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I think, it's, uh, I think that the world could sustain 8 billion people. I think it could. I don't think it's... It could sustain well, far more. I think it you're dead right. Far more. The fact that cost of living is... is, is, is but the thing expensive. is with the cost of living crisis, it's just... It's all about this running to net zero too quickly. It's all about uh, the, 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 the way that we're attempting to put taxes on this and taxes on that. Mm. That's the real reason, isn't it? Mm. Yes. <laughs> 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 so I was looking at a lady waving it's at cycle. me. I'll have my photo done with you later. All right, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> Some woman came up to me yesterday. She said, you know, I've looked like Bobby Davro. No offence. <laughs> <laughs> take it both ways, didn't you? I always thought you were Les Dennis. Yeah, a lot of people think I do. And when I... Actually, Les is one of my dearest friends. Yeah, uh, because that's, that's basically all the work that you didn't want he took on, didn't it? Uh, well, no, it wasn't that. He found the other way around, as happens. But whenever we hang out together, I always sign Les Dennis and he always signs Bobby Davro. Is that right? Oh, yes. You must have a ripping times together. Yeah, we, do. we do. We have fantastic <laughs> times. He's a good bloke. There we go. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what they do. They get together, rock and roll, and they literally. I'll sign You'd be your surprised. autograph. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a confession to make. Uh, I've actually slept with Les Dennis. Once again, for legal reasons. <laughs> but it's the truth. Right. For legal reasons, just yeah, I, I understand that. The phone's still ringing. In your I, under answer I understand. <laughs> I understand that. Legal have pointed out that All that right. was a joke. And it wasn't a joke, it was for real, I'm telling you. You shared a bed with him. I've shared a bed with Lee Dennis. You Nothing haven't wrong with slept. That. No, you I haven't. did sleep with him. We weren't awake. But we, we weren't awake. We were slept. <laughs> <It's better. laughs> I've got he to was awake. We, he was awake when we started. I've got, to, <laughs> I've, got to, I've, got to, I've got to be honest with you. I've got to be honest with you. If, if I were to imagine two things, what would be worse? Les Dennis and Bobby Davro it's sleeping together story. or Les Dennis and Bobby Davro <laughs> sleeping together? It was a great <laughs> story, though, because I was saying... It wasn't it was a great like... story. You, you, you both got drunk. You, we you, did. You fell into bed. In bed, yeah. And then in the morning, right, we were in this flat that was you being rented out. Too. The estate <laughs> agent came in and his little cockney bloke with a cap, he went... And he came through the bedroom and he said, this is the this is, this is the main bedroom to the apartment. And, it, and we, as we heard the door come open, me and Les sat up and the little cockney bloke with the cap one went, oh, bloody hell, he said, look, it's Bobby Davo, Les Dennis. And at exactly the same time, we both said, it's not what it looks like. You see, this is, not, <laughs> this is the reason why not enough people are having babies anymore. That's <laughs> precisely it. If the reason that people are not having babies is because they're going to bed with Les Dennis... <laughs> <laughs> that just, now, I do want to make very, very clear that that joke about you and him... It's the truth! ..sleeping together... It's was the not, truth! ..was not a reference to you sleeping together. Yeah, we but... were sleeping together. What else can you say? <laughs> We were just awake all night. What would we do if we were awake all night? 
have the number of babies born <laughs> fallen to the lowest level since 2002? Is it true or is it false? I don't care, it's true. Let's do it. Absolutely <laughs> true! <laughs> oh, give me an easy one because I've lost my partner. My intelligent partner's gone off to DC. The NHS is creating 244 new woke jobs. 14 million will be spent on jobs in equality, diversity and inclusion. Is it true or is it false? Oh, I bet it's true. I actually know it's true, and it's uh, probably going to give everyone a lot of relief when they're on the hold to their GP, not able to get an appointment. We've got a waiting list, which is at the highest level ever in history, and we're worried about diversity and inclusion. I actually worked for the NHS. I was a contractor there for six months. It was an absolute... I can't say that word. S show. It was an S show. Do you know what? Oh, they they were, they were. Didn't they try their best? They, were, they do us justice during the COVID. They, no, but there were, there were floors and floors and floors of mid-level managers all being paid thousands of pounds a year, and not enough doctors and nurses. Being That's paid, and I'm not being funny, Alex. Being paid thousands of pounds, <laughs> a year. tens of thousands of but, pounds. But a actually, year. I knew you'd work for the NHS. I wonder where you got that big flat from. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Bobby, so well, Bobby, you're you a big supporter of the NHS. Well, I think you've got to be because I can't afford private health. <laughs> but that, but uh, I, I think they do a good job. I think they do the as best they can under circumstances. I sympathise with the nurses. I don't think they get the kind of money. I've, bearing in mind, I've just gone through a, 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 a watching somebody um, having a terminal illness and they looked after... She was with the NHS and they looked after beautifully. So. Absolutely. I think you make a really good point there, but I think sometimes when we talk about the NHS, people conflate that with meaning doctors and nurses, but that's not what we're criticising. Yeah. We're criticising the management of the whole yeah. structure. We're not criticising the yeah, nurses and doctors but, who work ever well, so well, hard. But hang on, when there's but, a 12-month waiting list, you know, to, in maternity, I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, but it's the truth. I think that it's the management that are getting... But on, but on, but on, a, serious, off the on a serious note, Bobby, and it is a sensitive subject, but, you know, you lost your partner recently yeah. to cancer. It's something that inevitably is devastating for you. But can you tell us a little bit about your experience with the NHS? Because most people watching and listening to this won't know exactly what it's like to have gone through what you've gone through. Well, the level of care is, is, was fantastic for her. It's, it's, it, they, they give the level of care. I mean, the hours that some of these girls and, and boys were working um, were, were ridiculous for the kind of money they get. I think they're the people that should, should get more money. I definitely but support... But did, did you have difficulty visiting her because... No, of nothing at all. Was? No, nothing at all like that. And, you know, and then, then you've got hospices. I raised money for the working uh, hospice, Sam Bear Hospice. And, of course, they're, they're not um, supported by the government. It's purely financial... Um, the, the money that is raised for them. That's why I raise money, because they do such a fantastic job. And are you somebody, are you somebody who donated to these charities and supported these charities before your partner got ill? Uh, when it came to the hospice, uh, my mother died. I don't donate money. I donate my time and, and my talent, what, what I have of it. And, and that's, it's rewarding for me, not only for the people at the hospice. It, it's, got, it's great benefit. I've got a really difficult question for you now, but yeah. I hope you'll, you'll take it in the spirit that's intended. Yes. Um, were you, were you happy with the care? Were you pleased with the care that your partner got? Obviously, the outcome of a terminal illness is that it's terminal, but do you see what I mean? I was extremely happy. They let me stay, stay in the ward, which wasn't always the policy, but they made it a bit up and I could stay there for a few days at a time overnight so I could be with her. Well, um, you know, it, we took it in times so where I was trying to work as well on top of that and doing pantomimes and... Uh, and it, it, the level of care was fantastic and I would never criticise the, the, the doctors and the nurses and the, and the understaffed and all the, the people that go with that. It's the management, as you say. And a final, yeah. and a final question on this, because I don't, I don't want it to, to, yeah. to be downbeat, but it can't have been easy for you to one day... Well, to go directly from a hospital where your fiancé or your partner is yeah. terminally ill and then go to a pantomime or to a play... Yeah, it was very difficult. Comedies. It was very difficult. In fact, it cost me my, my, my pantomime career, I think, uh, as far as this is concerned, because they said, oh, we didn't turn... I was late twice for, for the half, I didn't miss one show, and I worked probably better than I'd ever worked before because I needed that. That's my medicine, making people laugh, getting out there and working. I need that. When I'm not working, it, it upsets me. Well, I'm sure... It's too much time to think. And, uh, and it, was, it was painful for me to not receive the support from my works area, from, you know, from, from within the, the, the company I was working for. They didn't support me at all. And, uh, in fact, I paid a price for it because I had to keep going back and forth because she was in agony. And, you, and not one not one phone call did I get. Oh, thank you for all your, your time and all your trouble and all, your, all the work that you did. You're, no, they criticised me on a couple of things where I was a bit late, delayed mm. because of this dreadfulness that was going on. And, uh, yeah, if you want to say it was, uh, it, it, uh, I'm a liability, I was a liability, wasn't I? But there was a fucking good reason for it. And if it was them, they'd have the same liabilities. I've got, I've got to be honest with you, you've done pantomimes for so many years. Yeah. Anybody in the management role would have known, that, or ought to have known. Oh, the they reason. knew. They knew, but they never, um, they never phoned up and asked how, they, how things were. They were only interested. And that's mm -hmm. the trouble with our industry. It's all about money. 
Show business is a business. And that's mm. what it's about. They don't care about yeah. what, uh, how you're, what you're going through. My friends do. I had the most fantastic support of them. Bless you, great friends. And, but it was a real tough crowd, a tough time. At, and uh, to, to feel as though um, they, they, I'm not saying punish me. I'm all right. I can do without it. I can do other work. But it's something that I really love doing. I really love doing Pan of Mind. Well, I've got to say, we're going to give you a round of applause because we want you back in Panto. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because I think, I think there's two elements to it, Bobby. I think the fact that you've got back on your horse is really pleasing. But OK, come on. Woke jobs at the NHS. Is it true or is it false? Oh, it's definitely true. It's definitely, it's definitely absolutely true. Absolutely true. true. <laughs> that was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. Well, this guy wasn't elected in a general election when he first came in as Prime Minister. He's just like Rishi Sunak, but there isn't a war at the moment. So I've been out and about in Westminster asking people if there should be a general election right now. Should there be a general election? What we've got, we have to live with. But we elected Boris, then no. Liz came in, and then Rishi no, came in. No, well, you've, yeah, but Boris, but it doesn't mean to say he's going to be there five years. He could have died, or he could have been ill, but he was ill, wasn't he? But he didn't die. No, I mean, he politically he died. Are you a bit annoyed that uh, we've got an unelected Prime Minister? Very. Very annoyed. Not happy at all. Which way would you vote if there was an election? The Christian People's Alliance Party, whose rosette I'm wearing and of which I'm a member, and I did stand for them at the local elections in South Hertfordshire. I know um, Christian People's Alliance, they are Christian kind of, but the nation has gone woke. So if you mention Jesus, they'll call you something else. They'll call you bigot. Every, anything, truth, people don't want the truth. Is they like a lie. They like different narratives. Christian people's alliance are the ones. Should there be a general election? Any time you like, yep. And will Labour win it? By a street. And is it good that, we're having, that we have an unelected government? Well, we don't have an unelected government, we have an unelected Prime Minister, don't we? A successive, uh, succession of them, uh, so that's not good, no. I mean, the big advantage of Rishi Sunak being Prime Minister is that he won't conspire to bring down the government anymore. No, well, the, the rest of his colleagues will conspire to do that anyway. He doesn't need to, they'll do it for him. Are the Conservatives now just a shambles? They're a complete shambles, and, uh, of course, it's a country that's suffering as a result of it. Oh, good to see you, yeah. I'm no, listen. really following you, Nigel and uh, Richard and all the rest. Listen, listen, should there be a Keep general going. election? Yes. Uh, why? Ah, ah, ah. Well, it's a trick question, isn't it? What are you looking forward to in a Rishi Sunak leadership, apart from the Roland Rat look? Well, he, he stopped the fracking, so that's wrong. They should do fracking. These people are intangible, aren't they? Yeah, they, they have no sort of backbone. They don't command any sort of respect or loyalty or anything. You know, you want somebody who's strong, a sort of shouldn't say it, but a sort of Thatcherite type of figure. There we go, we've got to, we've got to give him a kiss. Oh. There we go. It just feels sometimes that the government isn't listening to us at all. So are you just wasting your time standing here? No, um, I do agree. I think we've got a set of politicians who are answerable only to the elites. They're not listening to us. Frankly, I don't think they care very much about us. Unless I think we do activate ourselves, I think then they'll listen because they don't have control anymore. Why should there be a general election? Because we've got an unelected Prime Minister. So what would general election do? What, will I, what benefit would it be? Well, it would potentially bring in a, a new set of politicians who might be better. How do you know they might be better? I've, I don't. Well, they may not be better, they may be worse. But... So we're from frying pan to fire. Are you happy with Rishi Sunak as Prime Minister? I um, wish he hadn't pointed to Ella Braverman. I think it was a, an error of judgment. Uh, otherwise, uh, hopefully, compromise will try and get some stable government again. Are the Conservative Party now a joke? Uh, they are a disparate group made up of different strands. I don't see how they can stay together for much longer. Frankly, the political class that we have ended up with don't represent us. They don't act for us. They really, truly act for a, a higher group of elites, is what I think. Um, we've, but the answer, I think you were saying, is there any point of this? I think I've been over that in my mind. I think there is. We've got to activate ourselves because I think the one thing these elitists don't like or they can't handle is when people like us start going out on the streets. Are you worried about having an unelected government? Uh, well, not unelected government. The government was elected in, but the way they choose their leader is not fit for purpose today. And we feel that we've been left behind. 
whilst the party suits itself and not the country. Which way would you vote if there was a general election? Not Tory. <laughs> Anyone but the Tories? Yes. <laughs> what about Nigel Farage? No. What about Keir Starmer? No. What about the Liberal Democrat bloke, whoever it is this week? Well, let's be on a bit rude to not say his name. He said no to Farage, but he doesn't see Liberal Democrat. That's a bit unfair. <laughs> Come on, where's your empire? I can't, I can't remember his name right well, now. It's, it's Sir, Sir somebody Come or other. Come on, you're the reporter. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. Right, we're going to cut this. Can't do this anymore. <laughs> Bobby, oh, here we go. according Again. to polls, Keir Starmer has experienced an unprecedented surge Ooh. in popularity last week when he didn't speak for three days. <laughs> is it true or is it false? Well, you want to feel when a politician's lying because you can see their lips move. Um, <laughs> um, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true, of course. I mean, it, it, I, I heard him speaking. You are non-political, you're a comedian. Yeah. But when you look back at the, you know, the prime ministers of the past, the Margaret Thatchers, the Tony Blair, the John, the John Majors. Uh, John Majors. Um, I can do Tony Blair. I actually worked for Tony Blair. I, believe, I did his wife's uh, Sherry, isn't it, Sherry? Yeah. Sherry? I did her 60th birthday party. Uh, purely non I've got a lot of bad press on that. A lot of people on that funny old uh, Tic Tac wokey stuff thing that they do, isn't it? Uh, what's the other one? What's TikTok. TikTok? Uh, yeah, and Twitter. They said, oh, blood money and all that. I don't get involved in that. I go and do a job. But but if you look at somebody like Blur... I didn't even get paid for it. I just did it as a favour to a friend of mine. But if you compare somebody like Blur to Rishi Sunak, you compare, um, you know, Keir Starmer to Margaret Thatcher, there's no comparison. Now, I'm not being part of political there, because Blur and Thatcher were from different parties. Well, you've got to admire the ones you admire. I admired Thatcher. For a lot of people, they go, ooh, he's horrible, isn't he? I admired what she was, necessarily, her politics and her, 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 her policies. I mean, she had to make some really Could bad... Could you admire Margaret Thatcher, dear? <laughs> it was a... oh. You're better than Steve Nallon. Bobby Taff, <laughs> it was marvellous. It I was think... marvellous. I'll tell you, I'll tell you I, I've got a great Thatcher story. I've, I've, I've been thinking a few of them recently. Um, she, um, she was in Downing Street and they said, look, what we're going to do is we're going to get you on Desert Island Discs. And um, they, 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 they had to give her the answers because she just conceptually didn't understand what this show was about. And they, they were rehearsing it. And they said, does Dennis have a favourite song? And she said, because she was getting carried away, so she claimed to like the Beatles, which is obviously nonsense, right? And she goes, Dennis likes how much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> <laughs> he thinks it's marvellous. Marvellous to go, do not mention how much is that doggy in the window. <laughs> Does he love doggy in the window? <laughs> <laughs> I think the interesting thing about Margaret Thatcher, Tony Blair, and a lot of other previous prime ministers is they actually believed what they were saying. Yeah, yeah. Whether or not you agree with Thatcher or Blair, they really believed in what they were saying, and that gives an authenticity to how they present themselves. Uh, and yeah. they all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes in their lives, and they've got big decisions. Look at the Blair thing about the, the weapons of mass destruction. Turns out there wasn't any, and we went and we lost people in the and yeah. a lot of people suffered and died. But I've got to, I've got to say that to you, I've got I've got a really really weird and, and might, what might seem obscure theory as to why politics has gone so bad recently, and it's related to data analytics. What effectively happens in every political party is that now, rather than actually leading the debate, they just analyse data. They say, this person thinks this, 20% of the public think that, 30% yeah. of the public think this, 40% of the public think that. So what they now do, there is a pressure to get the most boring people possible and just say to them, say that. And, and it, I think like, that it, is, it, that is well, what's going on. Emma, you might be able to verify this for me, but I was told by a friend who works in Downer Street that they had literally, they, all they do is create policies off of YouGov polls. Oh, well, I hope that's not true, but I'm afraid with Rishi, I can believe it. Yeah. I tell the same joke. I'll, tell, I'll do a big joke. I won't do it. It's too rude for this show. Um, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> really? We've uh, tried every other one, Bobby. I did it as uh, John Major. I did it for Tony Blair. And I did it for... Um, and I do it now as Donald Trump. And, uh, you know, they're all up for ridicule. They're all up for fun. And, and the great Mike Yarrow, who sadly passed away, I'd like to mention he was one of my heroes, just passed away recently. He was um, known for political impressions. Yes. And, but he had no bias towards it. He never... I mean, although it was famous for Howard Wilson, I think they said this at the Latin Conference 1965 or whatever. I <laughs> love and, that. Um, and he, it was non-biased here. It was all Mickey-taking. And I think as long as you can give it to both sides, then you're but OK. The bit, but the, I am not... I'm, I'm not politically... I've got bit, a political but the, slump, but really. But the bit, Bobby, that people don't understand, and it's what, what, what you were just talking about, Alex, is this. An opinion poll can tell you what people think now, but they can't tell you what people will think after you've given some leadership. But it's all fake news, it's all fake it's news. Fake you know, Donald J. Trump, what does the J stand for? Genius. I, <laughs> I totally agree with you, Andre. I think that what they're missing is they're going at it from completely the wrong perspective. Rather than trying to persuade people of their views, they're looking at what their views are already and then trying to match what they're saying That's to exactly the right. views. I mean, if you, if you look at Margaret Thatcher, I don't know... I mean, people talk about whether the Falklands was... Whether 
the, the 1983 was a khaki election. That is the result of a war. But look, Margaret Thatcher could easily have lost uh, at one point. In, in 1981, she was the most unpopular prime minister since records began. But she stuck with monetarism. And by 1987, by 1990, uh, the, the economy was going off really well. 1997, when Tony Blair came in, he said there was that much money coming into the Exchequer. They didn't know what to do with it. I mean, they did squander it. <laughs> so they but, spent it all, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. They spent it all and more. Yeah. But, but, but of course, she led. She didn't follow. But I think also the, the, the point is that Thatcher actually was brought down by a policy that she, I, I don't think she polled probably very well because, and she stayed with her opinions and that's why you can still like her to this day because whether you liked her or not, she yep. stood on a solid ground. And, and that's why I think Trump, for me, is uh, his policy is uh, he's for America. He appears to be more dominant and that's where that was. I'll tell you what I like. I always like reading every year the Beano opinion poll. I don't know if you know about this. What? The, well, Beano, the comic? Every year, the Beano, uh, the Beano surveys under 10s for their political opinions. And obviously, their political opinions are basically non-existent. But they do like things like, they really like Donald Trump because of the white hair and the orange face. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah, I think yeah. is absolutely... Yeah. It was like an oompa loompa, didn't yeah. it? They appreciate yeah. that. I always, I always remember that, that great year when uh, they were asked, um, it was a few years ago, who is the most famous person in the world? And they said, at number three, the Queen. Mm. At number two, God. And at number one, <laughs> at number one, at number one Simon Cowell. <laughs> that's, really uh, that's true. But, OK, wow. has Keir Starmer's popularity increased since he stopped talking? Is it true or is it false? False, false, false. It's absolutely false! Hey. That was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. Pensioners are now 4,000 a year better off than working families. Is it true or is it false? Well, Alex, so I, I don't know a lot about this because I'm not anywhere near the pension age and my pension age started very recently. Don't look at me. Can I tell you something? Bobby's got a bus pass. Bobby's got a bus pass. <laughs> I haven't got a bus pass. I have got a senior rail car. <laughs> That'll save you some cash, you see. That's yeah. the whole point, right? That's the whole but point. I, I do think it might come down to this triple lock on pensions, which I believe the government can't touch. So I, I don't really know that. Maybe, Emma, you can help me out with this one. Um, well, yeah, they're based, they're, they can't technically say that they're going to protect the triple lock at the moment because there's a due process that has to be followed. But... What is a triple lock, sorry? What's that? Can I tell you something about the triple lock? No, I can't. No. Because <laughs> effectively what the government said was that they were going to protect pensions by making three layers of things that will stop anybody altering it. It's complete bunkum. Any majority in the House of Commons could repeal it. Is that correct? Pretty much, yeah. Is that, okay. Okay. Is that the national pension, not a private pension? Sorry, is that, is that... I love the way he's checking out. Yeah, yeah. Listen, no, listen, Bobby. Financial advice comes from financial advice. Oh, I'm so sorry. Focus. Focus. Maybe Focus. not from a conservative. Focus. Focus. No, one now. <laughs> well, he only did just turn 65. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Oh, well, I reckon he's still got a few quid. Oh, well, he cried poverty earlier in the pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Jim. That was Gordon Brown. Hey. <laughs> Gordon. OK, so are pensioners now £4,000 better off? I think they are. I actually it's think they are. absolutely true! Oh, well played. I'm being murdered now. I'm being hammered. The last question Ooh. goes to Emma. Ooh. Former Prime Minister Theresa May has announced that she is woke and proud this week, whereas we've all announced we don't care about you and never have. <laughs> well, I definitely agree with the last bit. Um, I think that she probably has because she's trying to get some publicity for her book to be honest, but not to be totally cynical about a former prime minister. Um, but I also don't think that she really knows what she's getting into with the term woke. I mean, she surely can't be in favour of, uh, you know, men in women's changing rooms, for example, given mm. her previous policies. And so I think maybe... Maybe she hasn't done, and usually for her, she hasn't done any research. You know, well, she, she did do some research. She actually read out the, de the dictionary definition of woke. Oh, did she? And oh, bless her. That's bless one her. of the hilarious things. She went, oh, well, so I believe in equality of, of, of people. So, yes, I may describe myself as woke. It's like, that's not can what I, woke that's what it means. To, Have you watched this show on a Saturday night? Can, I tell, you, can, oh. I, can I tell you? Oh, thank the, only word that isn't in, the only word that isn't in the dictionary, believe it or not, is gullible. And if you don't believe me, you look it up yourself. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got to tell you a story about when I got into a little bit of trouble uh, in the workplace. Um, it was when I, I bumped into Nick Timothy, former chief of staff to Theresa May, and uh, I said to him, oh, I see... So he said, do you know each other? We roughly know each other, shook hands. I went, uh, do, you, do you know... Um, 
I said, do you know that Theresa May's rerunning for Maidenhead? And he went, I don't know why she's bothering. She's a waste of time. I went, oh, come on, mate. You did ruin her career. Right? <laughs> yeah, oh. Give her a break, right? She'd made it into Downing Street after the Timothy was finished with her. It was all over. <laughs> she was run out of town. And then I said, I don't know why you're even here. Just tell the BBC all your opinions, because we don't care. And that was a moment when well, I got into trouble. Oh, when it comes to you, because you're right, but if she's writing a book, yeah, she's probably going to be good. I've just finished my book. Well, it was three more, three more pages to colour in. Uh, but I am actually bringing out a book called All the Male Celebrity um, uh, um, people Game Shows uh, <laughs> uh, Presenters I've, I've Slept With. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so much more of it. a book, it's more of a leaflet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm writing a book called The Great Sinecures of England. It's a list of the most ridiculous political appointments, some of which I have myself, um, but they include the Ale Connor of the City of London, whose job is, is to, and this is absolutely true, to wear lederhosen's and sick it sitting pints of beer in the square mile to test the purity of the alcohol. <laughs> Sign and, me and, up. And can I tell Sign you? Can I tell you what you're all going to do now is go? I do not believe that there is an election every year for the ale corners of London, but you would be wrong. There actually are. Anyway, <laughs> is, uh, is Theresa May woke and proud? Is it true or is it false? It's true. It's absolutely true. Hey. <laughs> So what is the final score, Woke Wabby? Ciao, Wokey. How are you? I'm all right, Dan. You managed to fix the scores for me? Of course, of course. Yeah, sort of OK, so what are the scores, Woke Wabby? <laughs> well, my question is, what's the prize this week? Ooh. The prize is a night out with Bobby Davro. <laughs> in that case, in that case, Alexander is on five points. <laughs> Emma is on five points. Andre is on five points. Davro is on five points, and I'm on a million points. Oh, okay. oh, You're not allowed I'm to cheat. You're not allowed to cheat. And you need to. You're not allowed to cheat. Oh! You're not allowed to cheat. Get in the middle. Get in the middle. <laughs> it's like being on a bouncy car. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it's a goodbye from me and from Davro. Don't do that. <laughs>